For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. Give no praises to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Racha Kudash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well. And labor in the word and doctrine. Shalom in peace. May that be unto the elect of the nation of Israel. Now, Lord willing, this video will run a bit smoother than my prior videos recently. So I've finally remembered to turn on the the screen timeout right, for a longer period of time. So forgive me for that. But without further ado, we're in Habakkuk, the second chapter, and we are in the time of these visions speaking. We are in an appointed time in these last days. We are going, well, we're damn near in. <laughs> well, we are in, not damn near. We're so near because we're in it, the third world. But we're damn near close to the f the the end of the end. If that makes sense. Told us about the beginning of sorrows, right? But we're about to go into the end of the end because this is a movie. This is the Lord's movie. All right, so the Lord set up the players. I mean, the characters, whatever, and we're all playing our role. So the antagonist is Esau, Edom. The the protagonist is Jacob, Israel. Right, and the, the rest of these nations are really just extras. Some ones are uh, larger ex extras than others, but the main two you know, characters, if you like, and using that analogy, are Jacob and Esau. Right, and these visions are yet from a point in time at the end it shall speak. Esau at the end, what does it say about that? Second Ezra 6 and 9 says, For Esau is the end of the world, Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Right, and this is prophecy. This is why we'll, we'll mention it so often. You know, to some, it can become weary. It can become tiresome. They want to hear something new. They want to hear something that's not been told a full time. Well, Ecclesiastes tells you, you know, is there anything that says, see, this is, you know, is, well, how does it say? You know, I'm paraphrasing this horribly, or I'm about to. But is there anything of where you can see, see, this is new. It says it's been already old time before us you know so everything is in a cycle but then there's there's extremities to it and we're in the extreme of E right so Esau is the end of the world Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth now we're going to news we're going to news and we filter it through the scriptures to go into prophecy to prove how these things are speaking okay so that's the only new thing but there's not going to be a new doctrine you know we're not going to come up with this new prophecy that we just you know there's no scripture on it oh we found in the gospel of mary you know that's why or the gospel of thomas you know, jake loves that shit anyway this is habakkuk chapter 2 starting at verse 1 it says i will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower you know because why the prophets are likened unto watchmen right specifically i'm thinking of ezekiel there's a scripture that talks about how if you speak, I think Ezekiel 3, well they say similar things, Ezekiel the third chapter and Ezekiel the 33rd chapter about, you know, when you, when you say unto the wicked, you will surely die, yeah, but if you don't warn him of the wickedness, the, well that's on your hands, you know, because you didn't tell him, however, if, you know, and if, and if you tell him and he, he repents, then good, yeah, all is good, but the most likely thing is, if you tell him and he doesn't change, well, it's not on you because you told him, but, you know, so you've cleansed your, your hands of that blood. But, you know, he will still perish in his unrighteousness. Because the Lord is going to bring heavy amount of judgment. And the whole, this man in the rulership seat right now on this earth has perverted the understanding of the gospel. Right, it's perverted the understanding of the Lord. You know, it's put a, an entity up whereby everyone believes there's no such thing as judgment anymore. You know, it's all mercy and love. You know, and that plays a factor, of course. But you have to balance it. And th this is a false balance. This is not a just weight. As Proverbs 11 and 1 speaks about. We have to do this thing in just weight. Right, not a false balance. Just meaning upright, right, righteous, weight. Right, so the scales. And you always see that in, um, whenever they have iconography. If you, if you were to have, let's say an app that went through some, you know, different, different careers app for example when you if you're to look at law they're gonna have a balance right a pair of scales 
right? But everyone's thrown off or been thrown off by this man, you know, on this is the right thing because I just told him he can keep doing it with no no repercussion. You know, that's that's the God people serve. You know, now we're not able to give out them judgments and repercussions, but we can at least live accordingly. You know, acknowledging that the Heavenly Father does bring judgment. You know, like it says, what manner of persons ought ye to be? You know, manner of holy conversation and godliness. And that goes into the end time, because that's talking about how all these things, material possessions, will be burned up. Okay, will be set on fire. So lucky about that. That breaks on now. So verse 1. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when, I'm, when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Right, so these scriptures are meant to be taught plainly. Right, meant to be taught in a manner that the average Jake can understand. Right, we shouldn't have to, you know, go into <laughs> into a, a theological cemetery to understand. You know, and they're called seminaries, but really they are cemeteries, as Elder Apostle Tar calls them. You know, because why? Because that's the congregation of the dead. So we shouldn't speak to our people in a manner that they're not you know not going to understand which unless you're learned you know you speak in that manner and there's nothing wrong with that you know and, and then teaching and bringing your, your audience up to that level but you can't assume that right so it should be it should be plain and if you're going to explain something um what's the right word if you're going to explain something that's a bit more elaborate to understand make sure that the explanation of the thing you know, it's just simple. You can break down something. A good teacher is someone that can break down something complicated into the most simple terms, but as concise as possible. Okay? So it says, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Verse 3 For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not, not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. And interestingly enough, only recently I did discover the word tarry in this scripture is obviously in the English it's the same word tarry, but in the Hebrew there's two different words for that. You know, so that's again why it's interesting and important to study these words. That can also help you as a teacher or as a, a student to better understand complex things. You know, if you break down the word um, let's, let's take you know, biology and if you know a bit of we're saying at camp you know if you know a few words you can begin to sort of work it out so biology goes into bios life and logos words or study well really it means words if you're taking the verbatim but it's come to mean study ology you know okay but psychology you know it says suke ology so bios Logos, life words. So these true, the true biology is the scripture, right? Because these are the words of life, right? The word of the heavenly Father. These words are spirit and they are life, right? And that's what it's the spirit that quickens. It's the flesh profiteth nothing, as that scripture is from. I think that's John six and sixty three, paraphrase roughly. Right. So it's not gonna, it's not gonna tarry. The vision, that, although it's from the time of creation. Until now, it's a, it's a long time for us, you know. But as we read, the heavenly Father is not on the same sorry on the same time scale as us. A thousand years is like unto one day. So the the um, crucifixion, burial, and resurrection of Yahweh Shai, unto us, you know, two thousand years. That's a that's a many lifetimes. I was going to say a lifetime ago. That's many lifetimes ago, right? But unto the heavenly father that's but two days now though we catch hell and a lot of shit happens day to day we can remember what happened two days ago just <laughs> right so that's it's, it's nothing right so though it tarry though it seems like it's going on forever it's not going to tarry it's not actually going to be forever right verse 4 behold his soul which is lifted up 
is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. So the soul of the wicked, right? E, as we call him. The soul of E is not upright in him. Is The soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Now that doesn't mean the just are going to live by the faith of E. Okay, that means the just is going to live by his own faith. Which is again, you know, certain language choices or certain translations can be a bit confusing because that's that's an ambiguous phrase. It's talking about the soul of E that's lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his own faith. So the gay also because he transgresseth by wine, talking about the the man whose soul is not upright. Yeah, because he transgresseth by wine, he's a he's a proud man, neither keepeth at home. Who enlargeth his desire as hell and is as death, right? He is the man of sin, the wages of sin and death. And is as death and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people. All right, so that's why all, even these other nations have a problem, certain of them have a problem with you getting on E. No one worse than Jake. You know, you see videos of people of other nations. Well, no, that's that's not right. Yeah, they've not even mentioned their, their nationality. Yeah, but just talking about E. And you sort of hear it, you know, round and about. Someone will say something about, you know, the, the rulers of this world or something. You know, and they'll be, they'll be them that put on the cape. And they'll be the ones that tell the truth. Proverbs 29 and 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. And you best believe the wicked beareth rule. Job 9.24 The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the face of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? Who is he? This man. Now verse 6. Shall not all these take up a parable against him and a titan proverb against him and say, Word to him that increaseth that which is not his, how long? And to him that ladeth himself with thick clay. Right, and you're going to see that because certain nations, they love him. Why? Because they can make money off him. That's it. That's the only reason. He doesn't provide any, <laughs> any boost in their happiness beyond financial and you know, military security. You have them, um, if they've been put, put in subjection, which all nations are subject. You know, whether it's a, a literal co colonial charter. You know, he says, well, this person owns this person. It's not in that manner anymore. But you best believe you still are owned. All of us. Now, the, at first they're going to be upset because they're not, when this man goes down, they're going to be upset because they're not making that same money anymore. However, yeah, after a while they're going to clock, well, this is a righteous rulership and that man was wicked. Also talks about in Isaiah 14, you know, how they're going to take up that proverb against the king of Babylon. And that's where you get the term Lucifer. Or where you get the idea that Lucifer is Satan. Now Lucifer means light bearer. And the light bearer, you know, bringing that knowledge, wisdom and understanding. Which is not wisdom. Because the knowledge of wi wickedness is not wisdom. Neither the counsel of sinners at any time prudence. But his, his uh, knowledge and understanding on the left hand side. He brings that and that's what he bears the light. You know, that how, however he is a Satan. He is an adversary. So that's where you get that term. Yeah, but I'll leave it there. Pray it was edifying. Next video, Lord willing. Shalom.